internet and welcome to my review for Boruto Naruto Next Generations episode 67. Uh, this is the first post Momoshiki arc episode uh, and we leave kind of off in the... We've pretty much dealt with the aftermath and now everyone has their new goals established. Uh, Sarada still wants to be the Hokage and Nar Boruto wants to be uh, her Sasuke. Uh, but we are dealing with really none of that this week because this is all... Chocho's at least two-parter. I really can't imagine this arc going past three-parter, but I, I really do see it ending next week, in all honesty, uh, as uh, Team 10 and Team 7 have to team up to do this, like, bodyguard mission with these two popular actors that Chocho's a big fan of. Uh, but anyway, onto the episode itself. I really find... I, I, li I really like the Chocho-Choji uh, father-daughter relationship thing, uh, especially, like, seeing Choji, like, try to understand... His daughter, like, he definitely sees that, like, they're similar in a lot of ways. But I like the fact he's just kind of, like, lost in it. I, I find that first scene with uh, Choji and Chocho a lot of fun. Even if it's a little bit frustrating that she, like, just does not care. Uh, though later on, given the fact that we find out that she already knows the butterfly jutsu, I, I think that might be why she doesn't care, because she already knows this stuff already. Um, and then after that little initial Cho Chocho and Choji scene... Uh, we cut to Mitsuki and Orochimaru training, uh, and there's just something about Orochimaru having to sign his son's paperwork that is just so funny to me. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> like, he's, you know, the demon of the least past, and he's signing his son's, like, permission slips. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. And then he ended up being, like, a good parent to, uh, to M Mitsuki. You know, there's the whole scene where, like, uh, where Mitsuki, like, joke jokingly asks, do I put you down for mother or father, which has always been a joke I've never been particularly fond of, uh, but Rochimaru makes it work with this whole spiel about, like, sure, you know, there, there have been times where I was a man and times where I was a woman, but in the end what really matters is that I love to know things. And, like, way to go, Rochimaru, telling your child that gender just does not matter. Honestly, Orochimaru ends up, somehow ends up the best parent in the series, which is the funniest thing to me. Orochimaru's whole development throughout this, you know, the whole saga of Naruto is maybe my favorite thing ever. It's just so ridiculous. Like, somehow, he's just being a good dad. Or a good mom, depending on his mood. I, lo I, I love him so much. Orochimaru's the great. Or Orochimaru is just great. Uh, speaking of great things, Sarada and Chocho's friendship is so so pure they're so like there for each other um they're so just good friends they're not like you know people people they're not like you know soccer and Eno's friendship was always a play displays like very catty and very like love rivalry and i really like how sarada and chocho just aren't they're just friends they're there for each other uh even when you know chocho is being a little bit weird during the mission sarada is still you know Hey, are you all right? What's wrong? Um, she's just, a, they're just both good friends. Even if Chocho kind of stumbles once she starts meeting uh, Tomaru, the famous actor. Um, which I'll talk about that later when we actually get to that part of the episode. But I really, I really do like that about their relationship. Uh, I also just, I wish I had Chocho's self-confidence. Chocho is just so good. And, ah, Chocho. I've said, I don't, don't know if I've said it on this channel particularly, because she has not been particularly prevalent since I started reviewing the anime and has never really been prevalent in the manga. But I, ever since I first saw her in Gaiden, I've been a huge uh, Chocho fan. Uh, and really just seeing a Chocho arc is a lot of fun. Uh, even if uh, I'm not really on board with this idea of Chocho just like instantly mastering the butterfly mode. Uh, she does say that she's been like working on it before. Um, and, and, you know, at least she's not, you know, Choji can go butterfly mode and be at full power and Chocho very much says, like, no, I can't do that. Uh, which is, you know, it's some, um, some power cap. She's not just, like, instantly all-powerful. Uh, and that does end up playing into the finale of the episode, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. Anyway, then we have Mitsuki and Boruto um, com going to the mission. Um, going to, you know, the mission and... Uh, Boruto complains that, like, he's has to bodyguard a man and can't bodyguard the famous actress, and Mitsuki does not get it, which means, like, is Mitsuki canonically bi? Because I am, I am down for canon by Mitsuki. Uh, I mean, we already know Mitsuki has a thing for Boruto, 
whether or not it's romantic or not is, you know, up in the air. But I think it's fairly safe to assume that Mitsuki is bi. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going for with this. Um, which is a very... That's, that's something I really like about the episode. Something I really was not big on is Chocho has this whole, you know, you know, now that she's thin with butterfly mode, now she's, like, all beautiful and everyone's gonna fall in love with her. Um, which, for one thing, is just a bad message to send to the kids who are watching this. Uh, but it also kind of seems out of place with her character. You know, unlike, you know, like, Choji was mostly confident in his weight, but just never wanted anyone to bring it up. Um, but Chocho has always come across as, like, very confident in her appearance. Even with, even earlier in the episode, her whole, like, my life won't be bound by calories line, it very much shows this, you know, confidence in her weight that we don't see throughout the rest of the episode, which I find to be not the best. You know, you know, like, later on when she's about to go full uh, full size to punch out the uh, attacker, and then she sees Tomaru and, like, slims down. Uh, which doesn't really feel like... It feels like it's in character for, like, what we see in the, earlier on in the episode, but it doesn't really feel like how Chocho is usually portrayed. And I'm not really feeling that. Um, but, you know, I, I am still hoping that maybe the theme of the arc will be like, oh, it's not your size that's important, which is a valuable message, especially for, you know, the show's fairly young audience. But it just feels like it's out of character for Chocho to not already be at that point. It, it feels like a bit of a regression uh, of Chocho's character just to, like, create drama for the arc. And I'm not really feeling it. Uh, I'm also not really feeling Chocho's whole going Sundere when she, like, starts working with Tomaru during the actual mission. It just doesn't quite seem like her. You know, she's normally, like, super confident, and maybe it's just, you know, oh, the famous actor, and she's, going like, retreating into her shell, weirdly. Uh, and, like, it's, and maybe we're supposed to be, like, oh, this isn't who Chocho is. Um, that shows us that, like, she's at a weird place or something. But I don't know, it just didn't really work for me. Uh, I'm also... So there was something about... I did like, as I said before, I really like how Sarada came and like, checked on her friend. That was a good thing to do. Um, but Chocho got, like, angry at her. And like, saying, like, oh, she's acting perfectly normally. And I'm just... I said before that I really liked how Sarada and Chocho's friendship was, like, notably non-catty. Um, you know, as opposed to, as I said, Sakura and Ino. Um, but here it kind of did not quite delve into that Sakura Ino rivalry thing, but just took a step in the wrong direction, I think. Um, and then as they're doing that, um, there's the whole bit where Tomaru gives her the ring prop and then she has this whole, I'm going to give up my ninja training for marriage training, which I'm not on board with and very glad this is mostly a filler arc, uh, so that nothing will happen but that. Um, but then, uh, someone comes to attack the studio and it looks like he's wearing a rain headband, like on his gas mask. Um, which I'm kind of curious if that means anything, if whoever's actually behind it, totally pricking, it's Tomaru, by the way, getting into that a little bit, um, but whoever's behind this, uh, just wants to stir up trouble between the leaf and the rain, that seems like it's not what's going on here, but, you know, if there's something going on, uh, if, if, it being a rain ninja actually really means anything, or if it's just like, oh, yeah, that's just... Who we got for this week? Hey, he's wearing a rain headband. Uh, but yeah, anyway, they beat the... Or the guy runs away because Chocho gets a little nervous. Um, like, upon see Tomaru seeing her at full size, she has to shrink back down. And as had already been established, she's not at full strength when she does that. Uh, but anyway, they go back to the... Like, the, but the producer is angry at them. And the producer's all mad at them. And Tomaru offers to give them a second chance with um, having Chocho star or take the part of that actress who was injured. And the way he does it is super creepy. The way he gets like right up into her, um, into her like face and like whispers in her ear about how beautiful she was. And, like she is 12, maybe 13, probably 12. And Tomaru is, you know, an adult, uh, which that's really the reason why I am full on expecting um, Tomaru to be the main villain of the arc. That's just definitely where I see this all going. Uh, you know, with, like, both that, and then he has, like, the kiss, he, like, the part is, like, a kissing scene, and again, 
He is significantly older than her. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the wiki. I doubt the wiki has her age, has his age. Um, but I'm gonna see if it does have his age. Uh, no, there's just an, another character named Tomaru. Uh, who is a, an academy student in part two? All right, but that's not who I'm looking for. Anyway, he he's he's an adult, and she is notably not an adult. Uh, and both that and, you know, the giving her a kissing scene definitely makes me think that the only way to really redeem that whole bit is if he's the villain and he's trying to trap her in some way. Uh, that's really how I expect next week to go down. Or if not next week, then the week after. Because, again, I do not see this arc going longer than three episodes. It's a really short arc. Uh, but all in all, I think this is a mostly good start to a new mini-arc. I definitely like the first half more than the back half. Just seeing seeing a cast that are, that like... We spent over a year really establishing that these people are friends first and foremost, and I think that definitely pays off now. As much as people have complained about it back in the first year of Boruto, I think it's definitely paying off down the line, because now just seeing them hang out is just so, so nice. It's like, yeah, these are friends, and this is what they do, and it's super good. Uh, especially loved, you know, Roshimaru. Oh my god, Roshimaru was so great in this episode. Um, but yeah, there's still some problems with... Mainly the storyline itself, so I imagine those will either get fixed next week or absolutely drag next week into the trash. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Until then, I hope you all are at least less cautious of... Or I, no, y'all should be just as cautious as I am. The whole adult trying to get a kissing scene with a 12 or 13-year-old should absolutely be setting off alarm bells. Unless he, unless he is the villain. I'm, at this point, I'm fully expecting him to be the villain. Um... But yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed the video and the episode. If you did, feel free to drop me a like, subscribe, or whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. And as always, people, keep kicking ass, and I'll see you in the future. Bye!